During the 1982 Falklands War, Operations Black Buck 1 to Black Buck 7 were a series of seven extremely long-range ground attack missions by Royal Air Force Vulcan bombers of the RAF Waddington Wing, comprising aircraft from 44 Squadron, 50 Squadron, 101 Squadron planned against Argentine positions in the Falkland Islands, of which five were actually flown. The Operation Black Buck raids were staged from RAF Ascension Island, close to the equator. The aircraft carried either 21 1000 or LB bombs internally or two or four Shrike anti-radar missiles externally. The overall effect of the raids on the war is difficult to determine, and the raids consumed precious tanker resources. The raids did minimal damage to the runway and damage to radars was quickly repaired. Commonly dismissed as post-war propaganda, Argentine sources originally claimed that the Vulcan raids influenced Argentina to withdraw some of their Dassault Mirage III fighter aircraft from the southern Argentina defense zone to the Buenos Aires defense zone. This dissuasive effect was however watered down when British officials made clear that there would be no strikes on air bases in Argentina. It has been suggested that the Black Buck raids were pressed home by the Royal Air Force because the British armed forces had been cut in the late 70s and the RAF may have desired a greater role in the conflict to prevent further cuts. A single crater was produced on the runway, rendering it impossible for the airfield to be used by fast jets. Argentine ground crew repaired the runway within 24 hours, to a level of quality suitable for the C-130 Hercules and Aramaki MB-339 jets. Many sources claim that fake craters confounded British damage assessment. However, the British were well aware that the runway remained in use by C-130 military transport aircraft and IA-58 pure car ground attack aircraft. The Vulcan lacked the range to fly to the Falklands without refueling several times, as it had been designed for medium-range standoff nuclear missions in Europe. The RAF's tanker planes were mostly converted Handley Page Victor bombers with similar range, so they too had to be refueled in the air. A total of 11 tankers were required for two Vulcans, a huge logistical effort as all aircraft had to use the same strip. The raids, at almost 6,800 nautical miles and 16 hours for the return journey, were the longest-ranged bombing raids in history at that time. Of the five Black Buck raids flown to completion, three were against Stanley Airfield, with the other two anti-radar missions using Shrike anti-radiation missiles. Background Without aircraft able to cover the long distance, activities in the South Atlantic would be carried out by the Royal Navy and the British Army. Plans were set in motion within the RAF to see if it could carry out any operations near the Falklands. The airfield nearest to the Falklands and usable for RAF operations was on Ascension Island, a British territory, with a single runway at Wide Awake Airfield which was leased to the U.S. Long-range operations were entirely dependent upon the RAF's tanker fleet and so 14 Handley Page Victor tankers were transferred from RAF Marham to Ascension Island. The RAF tankers themselves were capable of being refueled in flight, which meant that it was possible to set up relays of aircraft. The Avro Vulcan was the last of the British V bombers in operational use for bombing, but their squadrons were to be disbanded imminently. They were based in the UK and assigned to NATO for nuclear operations, neither air to air refueling nor conventional bombing had been practiced for several years. At Maham, the tanker force was set to planning refueling operations to take one or more bombers to the Falklands and back. At RAF Waddington, the retraining of crews in conventional bombing and in-flight refueling was begun. Aircraft were selected based upon their engines. Only those with the more powerful Bristol Olympus 301 engines were considered suitable. One of the most challenging tasks was reinstating the refueling system, which had been blocked off. One Victor was converted into an improvised photo reconnaissance aircraft. Three 22-year-old Vulcan B-2S were selected a Euro XM597, XM598 and XM607 a Euro drawn from No. 44, 50 and No. 101 Squadron RAF. Each was powered by the more powerful Olympus 301 engines. The Vulcans were deployed to Wide Awake, arriving on April 28. Two further Vulcans, 
XM612 and XJA23 were stationed at Wide Awake as reserve aircraft in case of mechanical failures in the three primary aircraft. Squadron Leader Neil McDougall, Squadron Leader John Reeve, Squadron Leader Alistair Monty Montgomery and Flight Lieutenant Martin Withers captained the Vulcans. To give improved electronic countermeasures against Argentine defenses, which were known to include Tiger Cat missile and radar controlled anti aircraft guns, Dash 10 pods from Blackburn Buccaneer aircraft at RAF Honington were fitted to the wings on improvised pylons. To navigate across the featureless seas, inertial guidance systems were borrowed from VC 10s and two installed in each Vulcan. The Vulcan fuel tanks could contain 9,200 gallons. Based upon estimates of the Vulcan's fuel need, 11 Victor tankers, including two reserve aircraft, were assigned to refuel the single Vulcan before and after its attack on the Falklands. The attacking Vulcan was refueled four times on the outward journey and once on the return journey, using over 220,000 gallons of aviation fuel during the mission. Two identically armed Vulcans took off for each mission, the second returning to base, without refueling, if no problems arose with the first, or assuming its role if the first could not continue. Each aircraft carried either 21 1,000-pound bombs or four Shrike anti-radar missiles with three 1,000-gallon auxiliary fuel tanks in the bomb bay. The bombs were intended to cause damage to Argentine installations, especially Port Stanley Airport. It being hoped that the attacks would cause the defenders to switch on defensive radars, which would then be targeted by the missiles. The lighter Shrike-armed Vulcans could loiter in the area longer than the bomb-armed Vulcans. Missions, Black Buck 1. The first surprise attack on the islands, on April 1, 30 May was aimed at the main runway at Port Stanley Airport. Carrying 21 1,000 LBS general purpose bombs, the bomber was to fly across the line of the runway at about 35 degrees. The bomb release system was timed to drop sequentially from 10,000 AFT so that at least one bomb would hit the runway. For the mission, two Vulcans took off from RAF Ascension Island. XM-598 was the lead with XM-607 as the reserve. Shortly after takeoff, XM-598, commanded by squadron leader John Reeve, suffered a pressurization failure and was forced to return to Ascension. XM-607, captained by Flight Lieutenant Martin Withers, took over. As well as XM-598, one of the Victor tankers returned to Ascension with a faulty refueling hose system and its place was taken by a reserve. The Vulcan was over its normal maximum takeoff weight to Euro each carried, as well as extra equipment like the Dash 10 and a chemical toilet, a highly experienced air-to-air -air refueling instructor from the Victor tanker force who would fly the Vulcan during refueling Euro, and fuel usage was higher than expected. As a result of the fuel demand and problems in flight with refueling, Two of the victors had to fly further south than planned, eating into their own reserves, and one of these, the last victor to refuel the Vulcan, was past the last refueling bracket before turning home. Tankers had to be sent south to refuel these victors so they could reach Ascension. A total of 11 victors were used to support Black Buck 1, XH-669, XH-672, XL-162, XL-163. XL-188, XL-189, XL-192, XL-232, XL-511, XL-513 and XM-717. XM-607 made the final approach at around 300 FT above the sea. Before climbing to attack height the H-2S radar was successfully locked onto offset markers on the coast and bombing handed over to the control system. The attack was delivered around 4 a.m. local time. XM-607 then climbed away from the airfield and headed nearly due north to a planned rendezvous with a victor some way off the coast of Rio de Janeiro. As it passed the British task force it signalled the code word a Euro or a superfusi a Euro indicating a successful attack. Its journey continued up within range of the South American coast to its rendezvous with a tanker. After contacting control with an update, the tanker was sent further south. To help bring the two planes together a Nimrod maritime reconnaissance aircraft was flown from wide awake to the area. Without an in-flight refueling system it was unable to loiter long. 
XM607 made the link and was able to return to Ascension. Northward received the A Euro A Super Fusia Euro message by 8.30 in the mod shortly thereafter. The news of the bombing raid was reported on the BBC World Service before either the Vulcan or the last tanker arrived at Ascension. The stick of 21 1000 LB bombs crossed the airfield, damaged the airport tower, scored a single direct hit in the center of the runway and killed two Air Force personnel. However, it still remained operational for the Argentine C-130 Hercules transports. The bombs falling on either side of the runway caused slight damage to tented installations in the airfield perimeter. This was due to the careful dispersal of equipment by the base commander. The attack took the Argentines completely by surprise. Withers was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for his part in the action. Squadron leader Bob Tuxford who had piloted Victor XL-189, the last Victor to refuel XM-607, received the Air Force Cross. Black Buck II, during the night of three-quarters May, XM-607 flew a near-identical mission to the first. XM-598 acted as flying reserve aircraft, piloted by squadron leader Alistair Montgomery. This raid targeted the area at the western end of the runway. According to RAF and White's book this was intended to prevent Argentine engineers from extending the runway sufficiently to make it capable of accommodating high-performance combat aircraft. However, according to the historian Lawrence Friedman BB-2 missed the runway because of the presence of Argentine Roland Sam. Two Argentine soldiers were wounded according to Argentine sources, which also confirm impacts near the western end of the airstrip. Black Buck 3, this mission, scheduled for May 13, was scrubbed before takeoff due to strong headwinds. Vulcans XM-612 and XM-607. Black Buck 4. This mission with XM-597, scheduled for May 28, was also scrubbed, but only some five hours after the Vulcan had taken off. One of the supporting Victor aircraft, which were flying refueling operations, suffered a failure of their hose and rogue refueling unit, and the flight had to be recalled. XM-598 acted as flying reserve aircraft. The mission had been due to be the first using American-supplied AGM-45 Shrike anti-radar missiles, which were mounted on the Vulcans using improvised underwing pylons. Black Buck 5. This mission, flown by squadron leader Neil McDougall and his crew from 50 Squadron and XM-597, on May 31, was the first completed anti-radar mission equipped with AGM-45A Shrike missiles. The main target was a Westinghouse ANTPS-43 long-range 3D radar that the Argentine Air Force deployed during April to guard the airspace surrounding the Falklands. An attack could only succeed if the targeted radar continued transmitting until struck. At 8.45 Z2 Shrikes were launched at it. The first missile impacted 10 meters away from the target, causing minor blast damage to the waveguide assembly, but not disabling the radar. The Argentine operators then turned their radar off, preventing further damage. The ANTPS-43 radar remained operational during the rest of the conflict. XM-598 acted as flying reserve aircraft, again piloted by Alistair Montgomery. Black Buck 6, this mission, again flown by squadron leader Neil McDougall in XM-597, was now armed with four missiles instead of two. Black Buck 6 loitered for 40 minutes in a vain effort to engage the unswitched ANTPS-43. Finally they fired two shrikes and destroyed a Skigard fire control radar of the Army's 601 anti-aircraft battalion on June 3, killing four radar operators, an officer, a sergeant and two privates. On its return flight the aircraft was forced to divert to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil after its in-flight refueling probe broke. One of the missiles it was carrying was ditched into the ocean to reduce drag, but the other remained stuck on the pylon and could not be released. Sensitive documents containing classified information were jettisoned into the sea via the crew hatch, and a mayday signal was sent. The aircraft was cleared to land by Brazilian authorities with less than 2,000 lbs of fuel remaining, not enough to complete a circuit of the airport. The aircraft was interned for nine days at Galia Poundo Air Force Base, then the crew and aircraft were returned on June 11, 
having been treated well by the authorities. However, the remaining Shrike missile was confiscated and never returned, and the Brazilian authorities returned the aircraft on condition that it would take no further part in the Falklands War. XM-598 acted as flying reserve aircraft, flown once again by Alastair Montgomery. Black Buck 7, the final Black Buck mission was against Argentine troop positions close to Stanley on June 12, cratering the eastern end of the airfield and causing widespread damage to airfield stores and facilities. The bombs were fused in error to explode on impact. The end of the war was in sight and the intention had been for them to explode in mid-air to destroy aircraft and stores without damaging the runway, which would be needed for RAF Phantom FGA-2 operations after the Falkland Islands were recaptured. The Argentine ground forces surrendered two days later. XM-598 acted as flying reserve aircraft, piloted by Alastair Montgomery. Effect the military effectiveness of Black Buck remains controversial to this day with some independent sources describing it as minimal, the damage to the airfield and radars being quickly repaired. The runway continued to be used by Argentine C-130s until the end of the war and was also available for Aramaki MB-339 jets and FMA Pucara S. As a result of the controversy a number of common misconceptions exist about the raid. Although commonly dismissed as British propaganda, Argentine sources confirm claims that Black Buck was initially responsible for the withdrawal of a number of Mirage IIIEA from operations over the islands in order to protect the mainland. This dissuasive effect was however watered down when British officials made clear that there would not be strikes on air bases in Argentina. There are urban legends that claim Argentine engineers building the runway plotted its position incorrectly on maps leading to the British missing the runway. The runway at Port Stanley was in fact built by British engineers, replacing an earlier temporary strip constructed by Laid in the early 1970s. The purposes of the raid and its impact on the runway are also commonly misunderstood. British Air Power Doctrine recognizes that attacks against the operating surfaces of runways can have limited effect. Planning for the raid called for a bomb run in a 35-degree cut across the runway, with the aim of placing at least one bomb on the runway and possibly two. The main purpose in doing so was to prevent the use of the runway by fast jets. In this respect the raid was successful as the repair to the runway was botched and subsequently there were several near accidents. However, it was realized at the time that the runway would likely remain open to use by C-130s. The RAF routinely practices rough field takeoffs in their C-130s. The Argentines left the runway covered with piles of earth during the day, leading to claims this caused British intelligence to surmise that repairs were still in progress and misleading the British as to the condition of the airfield and the success of their raids. In fact, the British were well aware that C-130 flights continued to use the airfield and attempted to interdict these flights leading to the loss of a C-130 on June 1, which was not, however, engaged in any resupply mission. Another common misconception is that the Argentine forces made no attempt to use the airfield at Port Stanley as a base for high-performance jets. In early April the Argentine naval aviation installed a rester gear on the runway to enable short landings, and A4Q Skyhawks of 3 Escadrilla and S2 trackers deployed to the airfield performing several reconnaissance missions until April 13 when they were redeployed to the continent to embark on Vain Cinco de Mayo. After the carrier returned to port, and due to the continuous naval bombardment of Stanley, the aircraft operated from Rio Grande, Tierra del Fuego and Rio Gallegos, Santa Cruz respectively. Engineers of the Argentine Air Force had added additional steel matting to extend the parking area for the pure cars and Aramakis that used the airfield but the main equipment to extend the runway was still on the ELMA cargo ship Cordoba which could not cross to the island due to the British submarine threat. To the British, the raids achieved a number of non-material objectives. These included demonstrating their willingness to defend British territories from forceful invasion, signalling British intent to recapture the Falklands, and showing Britain's ability to attack Argentine forces on the islands. It also demonstrated the possibility of escalating the conflict in future by striking industrial targets on the Argentinian mainland. Regardless of whether or not the British actually intended to pursue these options and escalate the conflict, 
the Argentinian leadership would have been fully aware of the implications. According to Roland White, the author of Vulcan 607, Vice Admiral Lombardo was led to believe that Black Buck 1 was the prelude to a full scale landing by the British. As a consequence, he ordered Rear Admiral Alara to immediately attack the British fleet. This attack took the form of a pincer movement, General Belgrano to the south and Bain Cinco de Mayo to the north. On May 2, General Belgrano was sunk by the submarine HMS Conqueror. The Argentine Navy withdrew to territorial waters and played no further part in the conflict. At the time, it was the longest bombing raid in history, covering over 3,400 nautical miles, all of which were conducted over the open sea. This record was not broken until an American B-52 flew from the USA to Iraq, and then returned to RAF Mildenhall in England during Operation Desert Storm in 1991, although a major difference between the two was that the B-52s benefited from Ford pre-positioned tankers for their aerial refueling. After the conflict ended, the runway was repaired and extended to allow the deployment of a detachment of Phantom FGR-2 fighters from No. 29 Squadron on October 17, 1982. Notes References Commodore Ruben Oscar Moro La Guerra in Auditor, 2000 ISBN 987-96007-3-8, Ward, Sharkey. See Harrier over the Falklands. Orion Books. ISBN 1-85797-102-7, White, Roland. Vulcan 607. Bantam Press. ISBN 0-593-05391-5, External Links, RAF, Falkland Islands, A History of the 1982 Conflict, RAF, Operation Black Buck.